Hello all, in this tutorial we are going to start our Velo coding for developing the image processing IP through neighborhood operation. So I'll be doing it uh, part by part. So we are going to start with the design for the line buffer. So remember one line buffer we are going to use to store one line of the image. Okay. So at the beginning again I am assuming we are going to process a grayscale image. So each pixel is only one byte and also i'm assuming we are going to process a file tool by file tool image later maybe we can parameterize things so uh, you can use the same design by just changing some parameters okay so from our discussion you might have noticed our line buffer it's nothing but a small memory actually some kind of ram where data will be initially filled from the original image and data will be read out and processed later. So this is like a RAM. Now, you cannot uh, model it as a FIFO because remember FIFO, you can store some data, you can read from the FIFO later, but the only problem is you can read it only once. Once you read the data, that is lost from the FIFO. Or basically you cannot, again, access it from the FIFO. But uh, when you are doing convolution, uh, you may have to use the same data again and again. For example, if, if this information is stored in the first line buffer, okay, you have to read it only once. But if this one is stored in the line buffer, you will need this information when you do the first round of con convolution, as well as when you do the second round of convolution. So same data you will have to reuse. So you cannot model it as a FIFO. Uh, for better design okay if you are rewriting same data again and again maybe you can model it as a FIFO but for a better design you will have to model it as a some kind of RAM now silings they provide uh, silings IP calls RAMs we have simple RAM so called dual port RAM true dual port RAM different kinds of uh, IPs are available but uh, for our particular requirement it will be better to write our own ip because the kind of flexibility that we need we will not get from the silence ip code what i mean by that will be clear when we uh, start the coding so i'll be starting a new Vivado project and we will be building different component initially and finally we'll be uh, connecting them together to build our enter ip code so let me call it uh, my project name as image processing keep it as a subdirectory and we create the project And I'm calling it as line buffer dot video. Okay, so we need to make some assumptions. So first assumption I'm making is uh, we will be writing one pixel at a time to my line buffer. That is one assumption. And second assumption, I think I already stated, I am assuming uh, the size of the image is 512 by 512. So we have to store 512 pixels in the line buffer. So based on these assumptions, uh, I am going to write the port declaration. So of course we need a clock. Let's add a reset signal also. I'm assuming active high reset. So this is the data coming to the line buffer. Okay. So this will be one pixel of data. And we need some indication like this is a valid data or not. So I have data valid also. So this looks like uh, Axis stream interface, except that I'm not putting a ready signal. Since this is a memory, there is no case like the memory is not ready to accept data. A memory will be always ready to accept data. Maybe you will be all writing some previous data, but still a memory cannot back pressure. So there is no need of ready signal. Okay, so that's about the input part. Now the output. When you read from the line buffer, what should happen? So look here. So this is how the convolution is going to happen. So this 
uh, line is in some line buffer and you need to read three pixels from this line buffer for doing the convolution when you are using a three by three kernel if you are using five by five kernel you will have to read five pixel from the line buffer now you can choose to read one pixel at a time from the line buffer then somehow concatenate three pixels and get this entire thing or for better performance you may read this entire three pixels in one shot from the line buffer okay so when you are doing uh, modeling the memory yourself the line buffer you can do this style but if you are using silings ip core you may not have this flexibility that's what i mentioned before so if you are reading three pixels in one shot that means you have to read uh, three times eight which is 24 bits in one shot so if you choose signing ip core it won't be supporting a size of 24 instead it will be supporting sizes which are power of two so maybe you can read like 8 16 32 but you won't be able to read 24 that is one one lack of flexibility which you can add if you are doing your code so i'm writing output again my assumption three by three kernel so 24 bit 23 down to zero data okay so you have to write like this you cannot write something like output uh, 7 down to 0 or data some 2 down to 0 something like that to indicate each pixel is 8 bit and you need to read 3 bit because in wetlock in input output port declaration you cannot have multi-dimensional array or remember this input output they are representing some wires uh, connecting to your module and in wedlock this is somehow representing a memory a two-dimensional array so in wedlock you cannot have uh, more than one dimensional array in your port declaration so you have to flatten the size of the interface so altogether 24 bit and you should write it like this and uh, that is all data and this is a memory as i mentioned before so there should be some signal which indicates data should be read from the line buffer okay so that i am modeling as input i read data so again this is similar to axis stream interface this is like data signal and this is like the ready signal from the slave here again there is no explicit valid signal because uh, from a memory you will always get some valid data so that is not there okay so that part is done now we can model the line buffer itself so line buffer is nothing but a memory okay so memory in wedlock this is how we model two dimensional reg followed by width of the memory so each pixel is 8 bit and we need 512 such 511 down to zero so this is actually the line buffer. This is the memory where the where the data will be stored. Okay, now let's model how data will be returned. So we are working synchronously. Okay, so what we need is whenever there is a new valid data coming, whenever there is a new pixel coming to the IP, that should be stored somewhere in this memory okay so again this looks like uh, uh, software implementation so you need some variable or here we need some register which will basically tell me in which memory location this new data should be stored okay so let's call that register right point because it's similar to a pointer uh, in in software what should be the size of the right pointer? The size of the right pointer will be log to the base to the depth of your memory because the pointer basically indicates which position in the memory. So the size of the register should be big enough to store values between 0 to 511, right? So log of 512, which is 9, so we need to write 8 down to 0 right pointer. And here we will write line of right pointer is i data so whenever a new pixel comes oh, under what condition if i data valid 
if there is a valid data that data will be stored in a location pointed by the right pointer okay so what should happen to the right pointer again logically if you think initially the right pointer should be pointing to the first memory location which is address zero once we write a data it should increment to the next value so and and so forth okay so again we are logically dividing our hardware into different always blocks you can write it in the same always block but it is better to uh, logically divide it into multiple always blocks so that your code becomes more maintainable more readable okay so i'm writing the logic for right pointer for such i clock begin so if there is a reset signal we will initialize the right pointer there to zero you can either write like this or tick d zero else if i data valid we will increment the right point so that next data will be stored in the next location okay fair enough so the right part part is done now we have to do the read part so to indicate from which location we need to read again we need another pointer similar to right pointer the size will be exactly same so let's call it read pointer now I'm going to write something like this, then I will explain why I'm writing like that. So I will write O data equal to which is 24 bit. Okay, so my 24 bit data will be the location currently pointed by read pointer. Assume we are starting from here. So this pixel, this pixel, and this pixel. So I will concatenate these three pixels and make my 24 bit data that's what i am doing so whichever location is pointed by read pointer the pixel value at that location and the next two locations okay and the first pixel value i want it on the leftmost side again look at the convolution operation the if i am reading from here this pixel on the left then next pixel then next pixel so based on that i am going to write something like uh, this is the concatenation operator in Wheelock. So I will say line of read pointer, wherever read pointer is pointed, line of read pointer plus one, then line of read pointer plus two. Okay, so three. Three bytes goes out in one shot and now the logic for read pointer similar to write pointer okay. copy paste if there is a reset our read pointer will be zero and instead of i data valid whenever someone reads okay i read data whenever someone reads from my line buffer i will increment my read pointer by one not by three okay why because when i'm doing convolution first i need these three bytes next time i need these three bytes okay not these three but this one this one and this one for that i need to increment the read pointer only by one okay so this is one thing again you can implement if you are writing the line buffer by yourself if you are using silence ip core you don't have this flexibility okay so you can have different uh, uh, write port and read port within silence ip core also but the only problem is whenever you increment the read part okay so it will always increment by the size of the read port width so in this case first it will be these three then it will be next three as i mentioned before silence they don't actually support 24 they support 32 so in that case first you will get this four then you will get next four not starting from here okay so that is why it is better you write the code yourself one thing uh, second one you can see like i wrote it as a combination logic i didn't write it in a always statement i wrote it as a combination statement 
because again, uh, if I write it as a sequential statement, I will have one clock read latency between this read data signal and when the actual data goes out. Now, that is perfectly fine, but uh, life will be easier if I have some kind of prefetching. If you have seen our previous tutorial, I hope it might be clear to you. In some cases, uh, it will be better if we have a prefetch operation. Okay, so when we, I guess in the previous tutorial, uh, we used the first word fall through FIFO, where the FIFO prefetches the next valid data and keeps it at the output. Similar, similar idea here. As soon as you um, power on your circuit, the data at, uh, because this reset will come, so this will become zero. So what our data is at location zero, location one, location two, it will be prefetched and available at the output. Okay, so I can read the data and as soon as read data signal comes, this will increment and it will get the next three bytes. So based on this style, I can have zero latency. Okay, so that's it. This is the entire design of a line buffer. And uh, this is actually the design for a RAM also. Okay, so when you are designing a RAM, this is how exactly it looks like. And the only thing is the, the read port and write port sizes are different in this RAM, in this memory. So we call them asymmetric RAM. And if you make them equal, yeah, that's like you are normal so-called uh, simple dual port RAM because you are writing through one interface and you are reading through another interface. Good. Now let us quickly simulate our design once to make sure it is working properly. So go to run simulation and choose simulation. Okay, this time also I'm just forcing the signal without writing any test bench. Let's apply some reset and keep all input signals in some default state. You can see right pointer, read pointer, both are initialized to zero, like we designed it. Okay, so let's remove the reset and let's store some data. Okay, so to store data, I'll make uh, this one one, force constant one, we make data valid one, force constant one. Okay, so let's store, say, six bytes, six pixels. So force constant two. So you can see our right pointer is incrementing here. So this got stored in zero. This will get stored in one. You can actually expand this line, the two-dimensional array, which is the memory you can actually see data getting stored. You can see in location zero, one got stored. And here, two will get stored. For small memory, Vivado will show it in the waveform. If it is large memory, he won't be able to show it. But there are other ways to see it. Okay, so it's constant three. Now, if you notice your O data, it is already showing one here, okay? So this is because of the combinational style we used. So as soon as one got stored in location zero, it is coming to our output because our read pointer value is zero. Okay, so three, four is constant, four, five,
Okay, so assume we are storing only six pixels, so we'll make that a valid zero. Okay, so we have already stored. And if you look at all data, you can already see zero, two, uh, one, two, three at the output, even before we made the read data signal high. Okay, so this is the effect of prefetching. I already have the data here. Now when I make read data high, let's see what happens. You can see here it became two, three, four. Okay, so two came to the left, then three, four. Here, three, four, five. So and and so forth. Uh, because of our prefetching style, when I write my remaining logic, I can make read data signal high. On the next clock itself, I can read because there is already a valid data here. I will get this data. In the subsequent clock, I will get this data, so on and so forth. But if you write sequentially, you will have one clock latency. So if you make read data high here, the valid data will come out only after this clock edge. So you can read it only in the subsequent clock edge. That's why we say there is one clock read latency. But based on our style, the combinational style, there is no read latency. There will be some impact on timing because of this. So we have to look for that. But on Z-board, we usually aim 100 megahertz, megahertz clock frequency. For 100 megahertz, okay, this will work perfectly fine. Okay, so that's it. So remaining, we will see in our next tutorial. Thank you.